Welcome to the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck, with me, Frank Baltiers, where step-by-step step I show you how you can build your own food truck from scratch. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've been a fellow subscriber, and you've seen all the previous videos that I've done up to this point, uh, and you built your own food truck, man, that's pretty awesome, because you guys do send me some messages, and uh, I'm, I'm, I, I get thrilled to see your progress on how my videos have helped you. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna take you on a tour of Big Red, that you see right behind me. And I wanna to try to answer some of the frequently asked questions that I receive on all the comments because I see each and every one and I comment on each and every one myself. So all the questions that you have, drop them there. I also do have a link that I provide access to like all the parts that I have. You can find all the parts for free. The only difference is that with the spreadsheet, I kind of put them all in one place and so it's easier for you to find. But again, I'm Frank Baltieres. Let's go on a quick tour of Big Red. Before we go inside, I just wanna show you the outside. So right here you have the concession window. Before, this trailer was just like this. It was just a plain utility trailer. I think they make concession trailers, they make utility trailers. I like this one, it's a Cargo Mate Blazer. And like I said, I cut this one myself. You guys can take my advice on how to build it. Again, everything I show you is stuff that I've done for my food truck, which is rolling burritos and obviously this one that you see built behind me. If you um, have any questions, make sure that you contact somebody locally if they wanna inspect it for you, if you guys don't feel comfortable. It falls on you, I'm just showing you what I did. So here's the window that I have. I bought it from JR Aluminum, and I bought this one too. This is a, a serving shelf, and I bought this one, same place, from JR Aluminum. This style that you see right here is called 23A, I believe, if they haven't changed the name of it. Obviously it has where you can uh, serve your food right here and then on this side is where I take the money uh, take the tips if they want to swipe their credit card and stuff like that this one right here I like to call the tip sh the tip shelf because I put my tip jar right here and uh, you always want to encourage people to leave you good tips if you do good service though you got to give good service and then I have my outside light which I'm going to show you the switches but if you see right here I have the outside light and I bought those at Home Depot and then I also have this one you see right here the the rope lights the colors those are also from home depot so i like this because it gives you a little remote that you can change the colors so that's kind of the outside on this part on the front i have the propane tanks the gas tanks and um uh, what you may call it the prop the generator shelf right in the front i don't know if i'm going to show you the guys that today because we'll run out of time but let's walk inside so right here immediately to my right it would be obviously your left you have your switches so a, a question that I receive quite frequently is, what do you use on your walls? So right here I have FRP. To be honest, I'll give you my, my personal opinion. I do not like the FRP. It will work. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just I feel like this white aluminum that you see in the ceiling, this right here is white aluminum. And I bought it from a place called Metal Supermarkets. It's not really like a place that I go to. I just called around. I googled metal distributors near me and metal uh, supermarkets popped up and that's what I used up here. These are little transition pieces. I got these from Menards. It's another hardware store kind of like Home Depot. But I, as I mentioned, this is an FRP and like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of it. You can install it. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than this. This was about $40, $50 a sheet. This is about $180 and then stainless steel on my left here. I don't know if it's gone down in price. That was about $300 a sheet, $400 a sheet. Um, so like I said, I don't know if it's gone down in price. It fluctuates quite a bit. So just know that behind your cooking equipment, you want to use stainless steel. But before you go on this side, let's continue over here. So I have wire mold boxes right here. These are my two switches, outside lights, inside lights. And then I put this little like a double-sided sticky right here so I don't lose the control. So then I just kind of stick it right there and it stays right there. These are my shelves that I use. These are made by Advanced Tapco. Uh, Regency also makes them. These are 18 inches from uh, back to front. And I like them because it gives you a lot of space here to move when you're cooking. Sometimes you have three, four people in here and they can, they can move around quite, quite nicely. This is a 16 foot trailer. As you can see, we have a lot of space back here and it's perfect because it's not a huge trailer. It's not a small trailer. It's the perfect size, I think, to get everything done. So again, we have your outlets right here. If your um, 
building department, if you get it inspected or whatnot, if they want GFCIs, the, like the ones that you have in your bathroom, then you can install that. Just make sure you get a deeper box. These are, like I said, wire mold boxes. So you just make sure you get a deeper one. I just put regular outlets because my uh, building department, health department, they don't require anything else. So if we move over here, again, this is just the same shelf. It's 10 feet of shelf from one side to the other. This is a switch outlet on this right side because I ran a switch leg, a wire from that switch all the way over here. And this controls the outside lights that you see on the right side because this is, this is the one for the rope lights. So that's a switched outlet, kind of like some houses have uh, that don't have a ceiling light on the top. When you flick a switch, it has like where you can put a table lamp somewhere in the room. It's the same concept here. This one on the left, that one does have power all the time because that's where I connect my, um, my register to take money or like my machine, my cash machine. So that's that one right there. That's it on this side. And then over here, this was all wood at one point. Again, I'm not a biggest fan of FRP. I'm gonna say that quite a bit because I did install it on this one. But if I could do it all over again, I would not. I'd go white aluminum. I have my breaker panel right here. It's a Siemens. It's an eight space panel. I have three circuits. If you guys can see right here, this is called the tandem breaker where you can connect two circuits on one space. Because if I were to take off this breaker panel, you can do 240 or you can do 120. I only run 120 and that's why it's all, it's all on one side right here and it skips a space. That's kind of how a panel is made. So that's this. And then from here behind the wall, I run my Romex wire behind the FRP and inside the plywood. You can run pipe if you want, I guess. I don't do it, but you can run EMT pipe. Over here, I have a wire that runs right here and it goes right here. This is my switch that goes to my fan over there. I don't have the break around for it because it's off right here. You guys can see it's off. But this would control the motor for the hood. So that's this one right here. And then down here, there's a dedicated circuit on this side for my food warmer. Because a food warmer takes about 12 amps typically. Obviously there's some that take a lot more. There's some that take a little bit less but I ran its own 15 amp circuit just for that food warmer on this side. This one over here would work. Yes, this one over here would work my prep fridge. So where I'm standing right here is where I would put my prep fridge or um, my refrigerator table where I would keep like all my supplies that I need. Right here in this exact space right here where I'm standing is where I would put my food warmer. Uh, you can either do a counter one or you can do one that's freestanding it's totally your preference you guys can see that i don't have any equipment here the reason i don't is because i don't know what i'm going to put here and based on that that would dictate how you do your fire suppression system so you don't want to put a fire suppression system without knowing what kind of equipment you're going to use because they have different nozzles for it that's what i have on my food truck rolling burritos is a high fire suppression system this right here is a seven foot hood from Hoodmart. You uh, have to call them, I think, to order. I, I don't know, because back here, right here, it's, they have what they call a, um, my goodness, I forgot the exact name that they, they did it. I don't know if it's a flange cut, but this hood is not 90 degrees. It's cut like this at an angle, and that's good for the food trucks because this roof kind of slopes down a little bit. So then this one allows for that little uh, cut in the back. You got to call them and ask them to do that cut. My goodness, it's killing me not to know the name. I'm sorry guys. If I find it, I'll put it in the comments for you guys in the description. But uh, in here, I have these. You got to make sure that these things are sharp. So when you're, when you're cleaning these, these are sharp inside. So they'll slice your finger if you're not careful. But those go in just like that and they give them to you from Hoodmark. Uh, again, this one, I don't remember the price, maybe about 15, 1600 bucks. It's a seven foot hood. Again, this is a prep table. This is a super heavy duty one because your cooking equipment is going to go right here. I'm gonna cut these, depending on the equipment that I use, I'm gonna cut these legs because then the, the equipment would be all the way up here. And obviously you don't wanna cook like this. So that's this part right here. Moving on to the front, before we finish, this is a three compartment sink. This is made by Advanced Tabco. The part number is FE31014. 
RL. RL means it has these 15 inch drain boards on the left and on the right. My health department requires drain boards and that's all this is right here. And it has your three basins, wash, rinse, and sanitize. That's what they require. And then it has your tanks down here. I bought those at Class A Customs. And then, to finish it off for you guys, I ran my plumbing lines, as you can see right here, it's inch and a half PVC. There are no P-traps. I know a lot of plumbers ask me and tell me, you need P-traps, but my health department does not require P-traps. They say that this is fine, this works, they have no issues. So as long as the health department tells me we're good, then I'm good. So that's all that matters to me is getting the green light from the health department. P-traps are irrelevant if the health department says we're good. But back here, we have our gas lines. The reason I ran three-quarter gas lines is because the equipment typically comes with three-quarter um, outputs that connect. So instead of like reducing uh, the pipe, I just ran it all in three quarters. I know it's all a little bit of an overkill, but that was easier for me because I didn't know how to build them in the beginning when I was showing you guys how to do this about, I would say two years ago. So again, that's the front right here. My tanks are from Class A Customs. Back here I have my water pump that you see right there. It's a 120 volt water pump. Just so you guys know, it's not 12 volts, it's 120 volt. And then over here, last but not least, sorry about that, you see, I have my water heater. It's a propane water heater. It's made by XL, XL. And uh, as I said, it works on propane. You can buy electric ones if you want to. Um, propane has worked fine for me. Maybe I would do electric because it works a little bit faster and it's just easier to plug in. Down here I have the switch outlet for my water pump, which runs right up here. You guys can see, this right here is a switch for that outlet to turn on the water pump. So instead of plugging it in, plugging it out, plugging it in, plugging it out, it's just a switch that works that. Finally, we have the hand sink right here. As required by my health department, they don't allow us to use the three compartment sink as a hand sink. So that's why I had to install this one. There you go. My fire extinguisher is down here. This one, they call it class ABC. This one is a class K. I do not have it because it's pretty pricey. It's like $200. So I don't want to buy it yet because it's a pretty pricey little monster. And then up here, just your hand soap and then your towel dispenser. Basically, that's it. A little tour of the food truck that we have here. We like to call her Big Red. Big Red because the ceiling is seven feet tall on the inside and uh, you can get lost up here. Oh, right here, these are strip lights. So I changed it up a little bit. On the other trailers that you guys have seen, if you go back to my videos, I use can lights six inch can lights. On this one, I use these strip lights. They work nice. I love these things because it's nice and bright in here and it helps almost like support the ceiling because it just keeps it up top real nice. So again, that's a tour that I can give you of Big Red and the video series, how to build your food truck, the grand tour of the inside. And I hope that answers some of your questions that you have, but if you have more, reach out to me at Rolling Burritos Food Truck at gmail.com or drop the comments in the comment section here, your question, and I'll answer it myself. Thanks again, Frank Baltieris.